This is Lesson 107, the HDL Example 73, and it's called Sprites in Block ROM. And in this example, we want to replace the module that we had here, the ROM that we had in the last lesson that contained your initials, with a full color photograph. This could be a photo of you, for example, some JPEG file you can start with. And we want to be able to display that image on the screen. We'll use this module VGA Bright sprite to do that. So what do we have to do to make this happen? Here is our photograph. It's a picture of two loons. It's called Loon 240 by 160. It's a JPEG file. And it's 240 pixels by 140 pixels. Now we're going to store that in the block ROM, or the block RAM, that we talked about back in Lesson 103. First, we need to see if it it's going to fit. Well, if the image is 240 by 160, we're going to use our 8-bit color. We'll pack our bytes this way. We'll take our 3 bits of red, our 3 bits of green, and our 2 bits of blue. We'll pack them in a byte, so every pixel in the image contains a byte of memory. And there are 240 by 160 of 38,400 bytes in this picture. And if you multiply by the 8 bits, you see that's 307,200 bits. And you remember that the Spartan 3E contains, the 500 part contains uh, 368,000 uh, such bits. So this image ought to fit. Now you can see we're not going to be able to fit much, a much larger picture. So 240 by 160 is close to the maximum size of a photo which will fit in this block ROM. Now, a JPEG file actually is 24-bit color. That is, there's 8 bits of red, 8 bits of blue, and 8 bits of green. And so we need to take the top 3 bits of red and pack them in here, the top 3 bits of green and pack them in here, and the top 2 bits of blue and put them in here to form our 8-bit color. So our 8-bit image isn't going to look quite as nice as this one. But to do that, <coughs> we're going to use a MATLAB program to make that conversion. So we're going to start with a JPEG file, and we need to convert it to a COE file that we can store in the block ROM. This is what the uh, beginning of such a COE file would look like. <coughs> so we need to pack these top three bits of red, top three bits of green, and top two bits of blue in there. <coughs> so here is the uh, MATLAB program that will do it. It's called image to coe 8 and if you run this uh, .m file, say help to it, it produces this, so this is in the header, creates a COE file uh, with a, either a bitmap or a JPEG uh, image. Um, .coe file contains 8-bit words. Each byte contains the 8-bit pixels, and we saw how they were packed. The upper 3 bits of the red, the next 3 of the green, and the lower 2 of the blue. <coughs> and when you call this, you'll say image2 equals image to coe8, and image file is the input file, and out file is the output. So you call it, as shown here, you would say image2 equals image to 8 image to COE8, and then you would put loons240 by 160.jpg, or you could put whatever you, the name of your image is, in single quotes, comma, and then the output file, dot COE. Now, here's actually a listing of the dot M file. We won't go through it in detail, but you start by saying image equals IM read image file. So you're going to read in the JPEG file, and you can extract the height by saying size image comma one image comma two. This is where the heights and widths occur. Then you'll open up a file for the output file to write to. So S is say F open, and then you use the F print F to print, for example, VGA memory map. That'll print this statement with the beginning semicolon, and then the next one prints the COE file with hex coefficients. The height and width you can pick off from the file, so it comes out 160 and 240. 
memory initialization. So you pick off these. And then you start with a count of zero. Now image two is going to end up being our converted file. We create it just so that we can produce a, an image of it and we can see uh, how much it got degraded. So here is the rest of the .m program. You just have a nested for loop for r equals 1 to height, for c equals 1 to width. So you go through each pixel and you pick off RGB. This, this is the row column for the red, row column for the green, row column for the blue. So these start out as 8-bit values. You convert them to binary and then the out bit file is going to be made up of the upper three bits of red and the upper th concatenated with the upper three bits of green and the lower two bits of B. And we, as I say, we're going to produce image two uh, out will be the converted uh, version of the image. And then the rest of this does some formatting by <coughs> putting in the semicolon at the end and the comma at the end of the rows. So that's how you convert and produce the uh, .coe file. And this is the result. This was the original photo. And this is the converted photo, the image 2.1, which is the 8-bit color. And you see that we lose some of the color definition in going from essentially 24-bit color to 8-bit color. Okay, now we want to display this 240 by 160 pixel sprite on the screen. And we'll, we'll put the upper left corner at column C1 and row R1. And then we'll start counting the pixels within the image. X pix will start at 0 and increase along the horizontal line, and Y pix will start at 0 and go down the screen. As we've seen, each uh, pixel is going to be an 8-bit byte containing the 3 bits of red, the 3 bits of green, and the 2 bits of blue. So M7 to 0 will be the output of our block ROM. Each memory location will contain one pixel, one 8-bit pixel. Now we need to be able to compute the address within the sprite at location x pix y pix. Well, that ROM address, since there are 240 pixels in a row, will just be 240 times y pix, the row, plus x pix. So you get 240 pixels on each row. You multiply by y pix starting at 0 here, and then add x pix. That will give you the ROM address containing a particular pixel within the image. Now here's how you can compute it within your program. We'd have the signal x pix y pix. These will be 10-bit numbers. So to compute 240 y pix plus x pix, we're going to use the technique we had for multiplying by a constant, you remember. Take powers of 2 to form the 240. Well, 240 is 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16. So this is 2 to the 6, so we shift y pix left 6 bits, that's this term, and we add 64 times y pix. Well, 64 shifts it uh, 6 bits to the right. This is 7 bits for 128, 6 bits for 64, 5 bits for 32, and 4 bits for 16. So this is 128 times y pix plus 64 times y pix plus 32 times y pix plus 16 times y pix. We'll call that ROM address 1. And then we add to that x pix with some zeros in, in front to give the ROM address of the pixel. Now, remember how you do the block ROM. We did this back in lesson 103. You use the core gen again, and you run the core generator. You're going to select memories, RAMs, and ROMs. This is going to be a single port block ROM. 
and then we'll put the component name, we'll call it loons240 by 160. The width is going to be 8 bits because they're 8 bit bytes and the depth is going to be 38,400. That's the 240 by 160 which gives us 38,400 bytes within the ROM. Then click next three times and you'll get over to here and you'll load the COE file. Now remember this one has the clock coming in so this is going to be a registered output that we saw before. So once you load the COE file that you made from the MATLAB then you click generate in order to generate uh, the block ROM component. So that's going to be this loons 240 by 160. Now we need BGA B sprite to generate the ROM address. It's going to be a 16-bit address to go in here and to then receive the uh, M, that is the 8-bit color values. So here's VGA B sprite. The horizontal and vertical counters are inputs again. M is the input from the PROM. The switches, we'll use that to move the uh, image around the screen just like we did for the initials. The ROM address 16 will be a 16-bit address and then we have the red, green, and blue outputs. So here's the architecture for our VGA B sprite. The width of the image is 240 pixels. The height is 160. C1 and R1 will be the upper left corner of the image. We'll set those using the switches, much as we did for the initials in the last example. Y pix and X pix. Y pix is just the vertical counter minus the vertical back porch minus R1 and X pix is going to be horizontal counter minus the horizontal back porch minus C1. So X pix and Y pix start at zero on the upper left corner of the image. X pix increasing across the image, Y pix increasing down the image. We'll define sprite on to be one when the horizontal and vertical counters are within the image, that is when HC is greater than C1 plus the horizontal back porch and less than C1 plus the horizontal back porch plus the width and at the same time the vertical counter is greater than or equal to R1 plus the vertical back porch and VC is less than R1 plus the vertical back porch plus H. Otherwise it's going to be zero. One little subtlety here, you might notice that we used a greater than here and a greater than or equal here and the less than or equal here. We needed the greater than here because remember the uh, block ROM is registered which means we're, we're delayed by one clock cycle in reading the image uh, out of the block ROM. Okay, continuing on the BGA B sprite we have a process X pix, Y pix, and we're going to compute the ROM address. And we've already seen how to do this. We're going to take, uh, we're computing Y times 240, which is 128 plus 64 plus 32 by 16, by shifting 7 bits, 6 bits, 5 bits, 4 bits, and then adding X pix to it. So this is ROM address 2. And so the 16-bit ROM address is ROM address 215 down to 0. So then to get the output, we'll have a process sprite on, bid on, and M. And we'll initialize the red, green, and blue to 0. So then if sprite on equals 1 and video on equals 1, now we want that's the area where we want to display the image. Red then the upper three bits of the memory location we read from the block ROM. Green is the next three bits and blue are the lower two bits. So this is the top level design. Clock div VGA 640 by 480, our block ROM and the VGA B sprite. So we just need to uh, write a VHDL program for this in the usual way. 
these are all the same inputs we've had before and we just port map them together port map the clock div the VGA 640 by 480 the B sprite and the looms so here's a program where you can display uh, any photograph up to about size 240 by 480 on the screen so you should try it maybe you'll take a picture of yourself if you want to use this exact program you'll need to crop it to be exactly 240 by uh, 160 uh, if you change the shape then you'll have to recalculate the ROM address remember the ROM address was computed assuming that the width was 240.